Yo, 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 guys, what's going on? Big Rob back with another boot camp beer making video or whatever the hell I call these things. Today, guys, we are cranking it up a notch. We are going from just your, your typical malt extract Cooper's kit beer to a partial grain. And what that means is when you get the Cooper's kits, these come pre hot okay? Now, partial grain is in between kit beer and all grain, okay? So all grain would be, you wouldn't buy anything but the grains. Partial grain is, for example, we're gonna use, these are called best case. If you're in Canada, I recommend these ones. Um, they're, they're really decent. Uh, and if, if you're anywhere else, I'm gonna give you one I recommend as well. Um, these ones are really decent, best case. Uh, they come with everything you need to do the partial grain. Partial grain beer is a step up in taste, quality, just, just everything over extract, a liquid pre hot extract, typical can of uh, you know, can of the goo that we've been brewing with up to this point. So in Canada I recommend Best Buy, I'll put a link under here where you can get it. Anywhere else I recommend um, Brewer's Best. I actually like these ones um, as good or better than the best case, it's just hard to get them in Canada. Uh, I get them from time to time. They make five gallons, which I think is about 19 liters. These ones in Canada may be 23 liters, but these are just as good or better, in fact. It's harder to get in Canada. So, what comes with these kit guys? Check it out. So here's the big difference. The grains, you actually are gonna be steep in the grains, which I'll show you what that is, but this actually helps to make the wort. So before, when it's in the Cooper's can, everything's done for you. Now you're making your own um, wort, okay? Because this is basically you just add water and some you know, some uh, brew enhancer or uh, corn sugar or dextrose to this and you're done. This one is going to take a little bit longer. It takes, I think, about, oh, probably about an hour and a half before it's all said and done. Um, you're going to add your grains. You're going to see me do that. The kits come with liquid malt extract. The difference between this and this is these ones are hot. Okay, so they, they, the Cooper's added all the hops for you. So this comes with, this, this kit actually is a... Uh, Red Bitter, uh, I believe it's, it's an English Bitter. Looking forward to this one. It actually comes with two packs of liquid malt, which we'll talk about putting into the brew at the right time. Comes with a packet of yeast, which different from the kit that you made out of the Coopers where you just add it to the uh, fermenter, the yeast, with this one you're actually going to, um, oh I forget what they actually call it, we're gonna hydrate. We're gonna hydrate the yeast before we put it into the fermenter. It also comes with some hops that we're going to add because remember this this malt extract is not pre-hopped, unlike the Cooper's one is pre-hopped. So this one we're going to have hops that we're going to add through the boiling process, and this would be your priming sugar that you would add to the bottles. However, I recommend the Cooper's carbonation drops so much easier. It also comes with a cheesecloth, which is pretty cool because this is what you actually boil. Now, not boil, you don't want to boil, you want to steep. And I'm going to get into that once we start doing it. You don't want to boil the grains, you get to steep them. Kind of like making tea, you put a tea bag in, you steep it. Uh, I think it's up to 100 and, oh, I forget, we'll look at the instructions with these ones. I always follow the instructions to the letter. I don't very much, uh, 155 degrees Fahrenheit. So, you're going to need, equipment-wise, you're going to need a thermometer. I have this, and I also have a digital one kicking around here somewhere that I use. Um, at the moment, what's going on, I don't know if you can see it over here, I believe you can. I've cleaned all my gear. Remember, sanitation is key for making beer. Liquid hand soap, non-scented. Cleaned it all, and right now it's sitting there sanitizing with the star sand. So next step, I'm going to move into getting the pot. And that's the other thing you're going to need. Thanks, Rob, for reminding me. You're going to need a boil pot. Um, this one, I don't know how much this one holds. But it's not, you're not holding a lot, you're holding uh, seven liters of cold water. Um, for this one, you'll have to do the conversion if you're in the US. But again, follow the instructions that will come with the Brewer's Best, which I'll put a link to where you can get these in the States uh, under this video as well. So that's what I got. When I come back, we'll be in the process of brewing this shit up. Hang tight. Okay, guys, perfect. We now have, this is just a real quick. Um, Update, we now have seven liters. This recipe, and every one will be a little different, but it's the same principle throughout all these partial grain kits. Um, our next step, by the way, I'm getting ahead, but our next video will be no kit, just ordering the ingredients like the kit on your own. So that's cool too, because then that actually cuts cost big time, and you can uh, pick and choose the ingredients you want to add. 
getting way ahead of topic, but on this kit, I added seven liters. I'm wanting, I got it on high right now. Um, I've got to get the temperature up to 155 degrees Fahrenheit. There's my uh, thermometer, plus I got a uh, electronic one. These are just, I'll put a link to where you can get these as well, but they're not crazy expensive. These ones are just little cheap ones, but they work fine. I use them both to kind of get in the right range. And it's just like tea. Like I said earlier, what we're going to do is we're going to take a bag of grains. I've already cut it open, so i got to be careful. I'm going to put it in the cheesecloth. I'm going to soak it. I'm going to take it off the heat. Once we get to 155, I might go up to 158 so it stays up around that level. I'm going to take it off the heat. I'm going to put the cheese bag in there. You're going to see. Just going to let it sit there and soak, just like making tea. So that's what I've got there right now, guys. Hang in there. I'll show you once the uh, cheesecloth is in and the brew is brewing. Okay, guys, you're walking with me now. Um, the the uh, grains are in the cheese bag, soaking in there just like tea. Now, I put a uh, false bottom uh, strainer, I guess you'd call it, on the bottom of the um, pan because I don't want the grains to to uh, scorch on the bottom of the uh, pan. I don't want them to burn. Um, so then I just, I just every once in a while give her a little stir, nothing major. You're not supposed to stir it really, but just let it sit in there. Um, I think this recipe calls for uh, 20 minutes. Temperature get up a little high. I'll tell you why. Uh, I've got I've got kids and the cops just showed up, said that uh, the boy was lighting a fire up at the skateboard park. Uh, so that's always an adventure. Rock on. That's why I make homebrew so I can uh, drink my... Uh, Parental stresses away, you betcha. Awesome. Let me see. All right, so uh, now immerse the cheesecloth bag in the temperature steep for 20 minutes. All right, so I just put that in about two minutes ago. So in 20 minutes, we take it out, and then we get to the next step, is which we add the malt extract, and then we stir it all up, and we boil it, and then we start adding the hops. So we're almost done. This is pretty cool. It just takes a little bit of time. I got to heat that water. I don't know, 20 minutes or so, um, and uh, the boil, it's gonna take even longer. So this is the time it takes when you're uh, partial grain brewing. So that's what I got, guys, be right back. All right, guys, we're cooking along here now. You'll see that the uh, the bag is actually out of the uh, pot, and you'll see there's still some uh, juice um, pouring out of there. What I do, and I did in this case, is when the 20 minutes were up is steeping, I held this up and uh, I let it drain for a little while. And the reason there's more coming out of there is because I have the water running um, over the malt, the liquid malts. Now you want to run hot water over them to get it to loosen up a little bit and get it to pour better. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take those liquid malts, I'm going to pour them directly into, this is your wort, this is the start of your wort, okay, this is how it looks after all the grains have been uh, steeped in there. I'm going to pour it in there and then we're going to get the, the uh, pot boiling. So I'll be back once it's boiling pouring it in. You don't need to see me do that. Just cut the top off those bad boys and dump her in. And uh, I'll be back because we're going to add the hops as soon as it starts to boil and I'll show you that. Okay guys, we uh, I wanted to give you a couple tips. So I, I put the malt extract from the bags, here's the empty bags now, um, into the pot where the grains were steeping. I put them in there and I stirred it up and made sure it was melted, dissolved, all the malt before I put it back on the oven, stove top I should say. Um, and now I've got it on high, and that malt tastes good man, it is tasty. And uh, I got it on high and we're going to get this to a boil, and it's going to take a while to get to a boil. Uh, that's why when you go to bigger batches and you do all grain, you got to actually get a, a bigger burner like an outdoor propane deal. Um, let me see, what else, a couple tips. Number one, anything that goes into the boil, you don't have to worry about sterilizing so much because the boil is going to sterilize it, okay? I would still clean everything. Um, I would also be careful, like in this case, I would, uh, those are just grains on top, but I would uh, definitely get the cover on there. I don't want, you know, whatever, cat hair or dog hair or flies or shit getting into your brew. Put it on there. You're going to take, as soon as it starts boiled, we're going to drop the hops in, okay? Now this, this, this brew calls for only two hops. Uh, some of them call for one, some of them call for three, most call for three. So this calls for two hop additions. One, we're going to put in um, right at the beginning uh, of the boil. Northern Brewer boiling hops. These ones are the finishing, so these ones we're not. We're going to do the northern, um, again, you're just going to follow your instructions, but the northern 
uh, brewer, these ones go in in the boil. And this, if you can see, it actually has right on it, boil. So that goes right at the beginning of the boil. Sometimes you'll get some flavoring hops that you would add about 15 minutes into a 30 minute boil. Again, the instructions will tell you. And then these finishing hops go in the last minute of the boil. Now some people will put those in little uh, baggies so that the, uh, the debris from the hops doesn't get into your, uh, your beer. However, I find that it drops. Um, especially on the Cooper's DIY kit, drops under the spigot, never had an issue with it. So I don't put them in a baggie, I just dump them right in the boil and just keep stirring it. So that's where we're at, guys. I will um, be back as soon as I add, as soon as it starts to boil and I add the boil hops to it, I'll be back with a little update at that time. Hang tight. All right, guys, as you can see, we've just started to get a little boil coming. Now we're adding the boiling hops. It is exactly 120, so we're going to do this for 30 minutes at, at 10 to 2 we are gonna take it off the burner. So I'm gonna dump these in. These boiling hops go for the full 30 minute boil. You just dump them in like that. Now what you wanna do, and with this recipe, I only have to um, add one more hop addition, which is the last minute of the boil. So now what you gotta do, guys, if you gotta stir this, you wanna keep it, you wanna keep it boiling, but a nice slow boil. So right now I've got the heat on high. I may turn that down a little bit to like nine or eight. I don't know if you can see it there. Older stove. Um, anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, a degree or two down from high, um, just so it doesn't boil over. It gets kind of nasty looking, um, but eventually what happens in the boil is all this foam drops, and that's uh, that's what we're looking for here. Um, so that's what I got, guys. I'm just going to sit here and stir this off and on for the next half a freaking hour. Uh, always nice if you have a brew on hand, which uh, it was early when I started, so I didn't. Oh, there's no such thing as early breakfast. Beer is so much more than a breakfast drink. Uh, however, I'm getting it on a little bit later with uh, with uh, getting my drink on with a couple buddies here a little bit later. So I'm saving up for that excursion. Anyway, so this is what I'm going to do. Just going to stir it every once in a while so it doesn't scorch the bottom. I'll be back the last minute before the boil ends to drop in the last bit of hops. And then uh, actually maybe back before that because I'm going to pitch my yeast. So I'll show you how I do that. Guys, the last time I left you, I said I was going to pitch my yeast. I meant I was going to hydrate my yeast. Now, the yeast you get under the cans of Coopers and all the other uh, cans of goo, um, you don't have to hydrate. Um, the yeast that you're going to buy moving forward on your own, uh, or ones that come in these two kits that we talked about, the brewer's best and the best case, you have to hydrate. And the instructions are um, rehydrate, I should say. Instructions right on the back. Uh, really straightforward. Uh, so what you do is you get some warm water. Uh, th this one calls for the water to be between 86 and 92 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, you, uh, the bowl, I sanitize the bowl. Okay, I just dump it in my, I always keep a little bit extra sanitizer ready to go. I sanitize the bowl. I fill it up with about 100 milliliters of water um, or whatever, not a big deal there either. I'm just stirring here as we go. We're getting awful close. We got about 10 minutes left of the boil, nine minutes before I add the uh, finishing hops. So back to the yeast. Um, you, uh, so, you, so, you, so you fill about 100 milliliters, 200 milliliters of water in the sanitized bowl. You add the yeast to it and I cover it with saran wrap or whatever the wrap that's called um, just to keep it uh, from, keep it sanitized, to stop it from getting contaminated. Uh, leave it there, the, this one says 15 minutes. Well, I'm gonna leave it there until I'm ready to pitch it. Uh, I'm actually not using this one, I'm using the uh, Cooper's DIY one that I love so much. Uh, still filled with sanitizer, so I'll be emptying that soon. Put the cover on it, keep it sanitized. <clears throat> um, so then I'm gonna keep the yeast covered until I've got the wart and the remaining amount of water in here and I've got it at the right temperature, which we'll talk about soon. And then I pitch that whole bowl, I just dump it right in, which you'll see me do, I just dump it right into the primary fermenter. Put the cover on, put her away to brew, baby. All right, all right. All right, dudes and dudettes, check out the time. One minute left in the boil. In go the what? The finishing hops as per the recipe. So they only go in there for one stinking minute. So I just dump them right in there, like I said, and then I just keep stirring. I've kept the boil going for close to half an hour here. Um, and that's it. I'm gonna, uh, I got a minute, minute and so left in the boil. And uh, from here, what we're gonna do, is as soon as the boil's over, I've already got the uh, sanit sanitizer out of the 
primary firmware to get the cover on it so it stays sanitized, gotta stay cleansed. And uh, what I'll do next is I will be adding pretty much this. So, so basically this is just like kit beer now. This is the same thing that you get when you buy the, uh, well not the same, it's better. Um, but basically you're at the same spot as when you buy the uh, um, Cooper's uh, goo, you know, the cans of goo. Same spot right now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put this into the primary fermenter. But first we're going to fill it up. Uh, shit, I don't know what it does it say. I think it's up to about the 20. 20 liter mark, uh, hop additions, blah, 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 20 top of the fermenter. Okay, it says pour five liters of very cold water into your sterilized plastic fermenter. I'm gonna put more than that and I'm probably gonna put at least 10. Um, and then I'm gonna uh, dump the, uh, the, uh, the boiled water in. And the, point, the reason why I'm putting 10 in is because we gotta get the temperature down to the pitching temperature, which is 18 to 22 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we got to get that. We got to get that. Uh, all the liquid that's going to be in here, we got to get it down to the right level before we can pitch the yeast. So I'll be right back. All right, my homies, this is where the fun begins. So here's what I did. I put five liters, as the instructions said, because I, I figured out what they were doing. Put five liters of cold water into the fermenter first. I dumped the hot wort from the pot in. And then I put another five liters in, and then I topped it up to the 23 liter mark with extra cold water. And as you will see, where is it? Oh, where the hell is it? Should be right there. You should be able to see that. I can't see it in the video though. What's going on? Uh, bear with me here, guys. Maybe it just doesn't show up in the color of the video. Weird. Anyway, there's, I don't know if you saw that or not. Doesn't matter, I'll tell you about it. On the side of the container, the primary fermenter, there is a thermostat, a thermometer, not a thermostat, that tells me the temperature. When I was done putting all the water in, even the cold water was up over 40 degrees Celsius. I've got to get it down to 28 degrees Celsius as soon as possible. Sorry, camera died, memory going on too long here. It's been a couple hour long video. I told you to take an hour and a half. It's a little over that when you do it this way. However, it makes good beer and it is fun. It's even better when you're drinking, which I'm not doing yet today, which sucks. Anyway, I'm good. Anyway, so what I was saying is that 40, over 40 degrees Celsius, I got to get down to 28 before I can put the yeast in. That is what's called pitching the yeast. Right now, I, it's, it's sitting at 38, so at least we're into the range because this only thing only goes to 40. I'm doing an ice bath, this is called. It's real nice if you have a wart chiller, which is advanced stuff that we'll go into maybe a little later on uh, down the road. However, it's real nice if it's winter time. You can take it out and put it in a snow bank. It seems to drop it faster. This takes a while. That uh, drives me crazy. Um, what I should have done is I should have taken the pot with the uh, wart in it, put it in the ice. Um, and then see if I could have got it down that way. But maybe this will go faster because I did add cold water. Anyway, so that's what we're doing now. We're just sitting around waiting until temperature drops 28 degrees Celsius. I'm then going to put the yeast that we got here, rehydrate and put it in. And I just put All right, guys. We are at the point where we're going to pitch the yeast. Wow, that took a long time to cool that down. Um... I remember brewing my last one of these and it took the same time. The difference between the brew case and the brew, um, what's the other one? I know I've already put the box away, but the, the American one, best brew I think it was, um, and the one I did which was the best case, uh, Brewer's Best was the American one, and the best case was the Canadian one. The difference is the amount um, of volume. Uh, the American one, Brewer's Best, is only 19 liters. That one cools down much quicker. It's amazing how that extra three, four, five liters, because the uh, the uh, best case is 23 liters. So um, it took a long time to cool down. And to tell you the truth, I'm sitting at, I don't know if you can see it. Um, we're sitting at 28 to 30. I'm supposed to be 28, which is the high end, 28, before you pitch the yeast. But... I don't care. Won't make a big difference. And frankly, I got shit to do. I've been doing this all day here for you. A uh, couple hours anyways. And I got, I got some shit to do. So I'm going to pitch the yeast. Um, I've also taken my sample of the hydrometer. I'm not going to do the test on here because this video went way too long. Um, but I'm ch check out the hydrometer video. Um, because you do want to take your hydrometer readings. Um, and you want to be able to determine the alcohol content at the end of the brew. So I'm not going to do that here. But remember to do it. And that's one of the bonuses of the 
Cooper's DIY kit is you can actually just drop the hydrometer there, turn on the spigot, fill it up. Versus the other stuff, you got to get like a turkey basin sucking plungy thing where you stick it in, suck the liquid out, fill up the hydrometer. Okay. Um, all right, let's pitch the yeast. So it's in there nice. Um, it was in there too long as well. It won't hurt it any though. It was only supposed to be in there for about 15, 20 minutes, but it turned out being in there for a long time. Uh, I gave it a little stir. Um, also, I stirred up the wort, uh, i.e. the liquid. I gave it a great good stirring, and you should do that before you pitch yeast. And this is all you do, guys. Dump that in there. You want to get it all. I'm going to give uh, put a little water in there to swish it around and get the rest of it. That's what I got, guys. Now I'm just putting this away in a uh, room uh, temperature uh, room. <laughs> um, I'm thinking about, I, I don't even pay much attention to it anymore, but you don't want it too hot, so... I'm thinking about 15 to 18 degrees Celsius. You'll have to do the conversion to get the, the Fahrenheit out of that. Um, but just room temperature, not hot. You don't want it hot. Um, just comfortable, okay? And I put it in a dark spot. That's what I got, guys. So uh, on to the next uh, homebrew um, boot camp video. Um, be sure to uh, get brewing. Get one of these cases. I'm going to put the links down below. Um, pick yourself up one of these. And learn how to do this. It's, it's, the, it's the next big step in your learning process of how to... Uh, make beer you may just stop here you may say this is great this makes great beer uh, it's it's wonderful it's not expensive and uh, i love it um the next stage is basically the same except instead of buying a kit we're just going to buy the ingredients so that'll be cool and we'll be on to the we'll be on to that one shortly if i'm here for you by the way if you have any questions rock on guys have a good weekend can't get the video off you would think it would be tired of recording me just loves me so much Yappy, 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 and...